Right. So um, back to the artists. Um, so last week we looked at a number of artists like Paul Wright and um, I can't remember the name of the other the lady that we looked at as well. But let's go over to the wall anyway and have a quick look. Uh, yeah, so we looked at some of these painterly artists um, here. This one was Paul Wright and this one, again, I can't remember at the moment. I'll go back to that one and find out again for you. But it is listed on the website if you want to know more about this artist. But we talked about how the artists can use mark making and colour to be a little bit more expressive and to um, make the painting come alive in a sense. So Paul Wright's a really good example of that. He uses these um, quite broad brush, stro brush strokes. So if you look down here on the on the cheek, just here, you can see this lovely red brush stroke that comes off of his cheek here, but then another one that comes down over the top of it. So it's a case of building up these layers of quite vivid and bold colours uh, to make the painting uh, come together as one overall. Um, so I'm going to be working, I'm going to be using this as inspiration today, um, but uh, the idea I thought we would do this time is rather than a, a straight copy of an artwork, um, what we're going to do is um, take a photograph and then draw it out. Uh, so you can use any method you like for that, of course. You can use your grids or you could use your, um, you could trace the outline if you want to get into it quickly. Um, or you could just go freehand, which is what I'm doing at the moment. Um, and then try to use the style of the artist that you've um, chosen to look at whilst doing this one. So I'm using this uh, Paul Wright portrait as both my colour palette also a little bit of inspiration for the marks which is the, the brush strokes and, and so forth so um, I'm going to be doing that and I'll show you that how I've started that and which picture I'm going to use in just a second don't forget as well that you've got your color um, charts up here those are all available still for download on the website um, so if you wanted those or if you haven't got them at the moment you need to go and get them that's where to get them um, over here, we've got um, the painting that I worked on um, last lesson. So I got about as far as halfway. So I did the shaded half, the darker, more red half of his face. Uh, and then I've completed the painting, um, well, just about anyway, uh, last week. So I'm going to show you that now. Right, so this is the portrait that we worked on, and that was my uh, version of it, if you like. And um, what I'd done uh, to start with is I, I started by painting in the darker areas around here um, and some of the more reddish sorts of tones. And then gradually, as the paint layered and built up on top of each other, you start to get this quite lovely depth in the painting as well. I did the same on this half as well, but obviously with a lighter colour palette, you can see some similarities with um, this painting, I guess. Similar techniques, although Paul Wright is much more uses these much more sweeping um, brush strokes um, to create a, a similar effect, but one that's I think perhaps got a little bit more energy and something more about it uh, than even this one, which I thought was a really nice picture anyway. Uh, the other thing is I created a nice background to work into. Um, so I used ultramarine in the background of the picture and then you can see where I've just left a little bit of it poking through in different places even around the eyes and things and that just gives the painting again a little bit more um, zing if you like um, because you've got these oranges and reds next to these blues which poke through from the background uh, just there as well. Um, one little thing about mixing uh, or place to start with this sort of thing is that um, what you want to do is look for a general kind of skin tone, something between the lightest and the darkest uh, skin tone on any given side of the face, and then start from there and work out either way. So basically you would add darker skin tones by going one way and lighter by going the other way if you've got uh, kind of a nice mid-tone to work from and work out from. And then obviously other little bits of colour have crept in as well um, to the picture which appear on here which are these greens 
which kind of suggests a little bit of atmosphere and some shadows um, as well and also in some cases they just add a little bit more movement and energy into the picture itself as well so when you start it off when you've got your drawing thing to do and this is the picture sorry this is the picture that i'm gonna use as my main sort of uh tonal sort of range you can use a color picture if you want to i did have a color picture that i was thinking i was thinking of doing that one as well um, but i've chosen to do this one and i'm going to use this to help me with the color because as you can see you've got a shaded half here where the shadow is falling across the face and you've got a lighter half here so i can use this as a reference point for when i paint this which in itself is uh, quite quite a challenge in a way. Yes. Yeah. But um, so, I mean, if you you know if you wanted to and you feel like oh I want to try out a different artist today, you could alternatively, you could draw out a new one of uh, a new artist and have a go at that. But to say um, anyway, to say um, just wanted to say that I was re I was really impressed with um, the work that you came out with. Uh, and thank you uh, for putting that online as well because it's really good to see how the work develops because we don't always finish in the lesson so it's nice to uh, see how you all get on okay so I've started to sketch out this fella still got a little way to go but you can see I've just started to put the outlines in um, and then what I'll do is I'll start on the darker uh, side of the face, the tonal sort of side like this, straight afterwards. But that'll be a few minutes, yeah. All right. So, um, does anyone have any uh, questions about that at the moment? Does that one defeat the object? <laughs> Elvis again. <laughs> but I didn't have to is that is that is that a Paul Wright picture or? Yes. Is it Paul Wright Elvis? Excellent. <laughs> I think it was amazing. Yeah. That label I did was Paul Wright. Yeah, yeah. With the eyes and the, and it makes you wonder why suddenly they think, well, I've just done a bit of green there. Yeah. Because you've not actually got any <laughs> green mixed. Yeah. And, but it needed when if you don't put it in, it's missing. It and lifts. It lifts it, doesn't it? It's so it. clever. Yeah. Well, you you see the thing is they're opposite colours, aren't they, to each other? So you've got red and green are opposite. So when you've got these like really warm pinks and things in here and then you put those next to a little bit of this kind of uh, tinted emerald green, then you end up with something that's, you know, creates a little bit of movement and energy, I think. So, yeah, it's good fun. Amazing. I just think they're amazing. Yeah. They well, are, I think he is particularly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Elvis, of course. Yes. <laughs> I don't think that was hard. <laughs> you know, oh, we just got to do that one now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One that I really liked. I yeah. Really yeah. Then I'm not drawing them in black and white. Does that matter? Um. I've never worked. No, no, no. Um. I've only I've only got the black and white one because I like the picture and um, and I thought it'd be quite a nice one to do. So. That's why okay. I'm going for that one. There was a um, portrait artist of the week was on Sunday morning. Yeah. And she did um Clive somebody who's a black newsreader, very famous, I can't remember his other name. She's only twenty three and she won two rounds when she did portrait artist of the week. Yeah. Another of the year, I mean, but now she's doing it of the week. Her name was Kayoon and she did this fantastic picture she didn't finish it yeah and um she'd done purples in his skin and oh yeah yeah oh it was so good mm. and she kept leaving his eyes and they kept saying well aren't you going to do his eyes and she just carried on yeah but for 23 year old she showed so much yeah it's inspiring isn't it yeah really yeah good. when you see people just do it like that you think wow because <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> Before she left a lot of the background showing through, but she's going to college now and doing yeah. other things. Oh, and I see. The judges did say to her, "Don't lose what you've already got." Yeah. Well, you, very talented. Things do inevitably change. You know, it just depends if you want to keep doing the same thing or not. Yeah. You know, I've yeah. changed around 
the things that I do quite a bit um, previously, you know. Um, but there's, yeah. you know, it's just like you know, you think, oh, I want to do that, I want to do this, you want to do it all. <laughs> but that's never the case. You can't do everything, but you might as well do a few things as well as you can. I like it. I think <laughs> it's got a lot of. Um, I wish I could just draw things freehand, but never mind. Yeah, well, I I, th I see it as a little bit of a challenge, you know, to see if you can do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is right, everybody so else all right over there? Hi everyone. Hannah, you're right. Late, so I didn't want to interrupt in the conversation. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> you okay, Hannah? Jackie, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Okay. Fine. I think thank you. you. I just want to ask a question. Yes, yes, that's what I thought. Yeah. And <laughs> um, about the color palette that you told me. Yes. And um, so, is it really important to stick to a colour palette? What, like this you mean, or...? Yeah. Um, no, um, I'm just using it as a as a reference for, you know, for the lesson, really. I mean, you could just, you know, I mean, the majority of this portrait, for example, is done using lots of skin tones, but in much more of a blocky fashion, if you like. Uh, and then little colours have been thrown in there. So, I mean, I've done a portrait that has got like purples, um, nice purples and blues for these uh, shadows. So you, uh, you could sort of take this as your reference and then sort of say, right, well, I'm going to put in some purples and blues instead in my shadows and make them, um, you know, give that sense of atmosphere in there. This one, I think, gives the, the greens, give it a little bit more energy as well, don't they? So, uh, yeah, the thing you've got to be careful of, though, um, which is another good reason to work from a, a, an artist, is sometimes it's easy just to keep putting in, oh, I'll just put another bit of colour in, I'll put in and you yeah. end up with too much. So often um, artists uh, res um, choose to restrict what um, options they've got in order to make themselves um, make more con precise choices and to... Um, help them uh, control a little bit more the direction of the work so you know so you could say right okay I'm gonna I'm gonna use these colors and then stick with those colors and then you might find that it just needs something else and you put a little bit of an accent of another color into that as well um, okay. without without it becoming like there's lots of disco lights on <laughs> yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. And that doesn't look like um, there's much of a uh, background colour on that. It all looks what, like on the, on the on Paul Wright one, one? The one in front of me now. Yeah, the Paul Wright. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so let's have a look at the original here. Look, there isn't, uh, you're right, there isn't a great deal. It's much more kind of uh, fresh looking in the background, isn't it? And you look around the neck and there's nothing in there either. So... Yeah. Whereas, you know, in the past I've used, um, like in the last painting, I used a blue background, didn't I? Um, yeah. So that was a conscious choice. Whereas um, I'm not sure how, how he works all the time, but um, it's quite spontaneous looking. And that freshness and spontaneity comes through because he's got that nice white background. And inevitably some of that white comes through into the picture as well, yeah. doesn't it? So... It's not absolutely necessary to create a background first, um, but I find it's quite nice to do because you get this, um, you get, you automatically get this build up of colour and you can see the whites and the darks come through quite quickly when you put them down. Right. And yeah. the other thing is, would he have, um, would he have drawn that first or would he have just done that with paint? Um, well, I'll tell you what, there is a video. <laughs> I can't remember what he did now in the video. Okay. But certainly, um, I think, personally, I think he would have drawn some of it out. Yeah. yeah. But um, uh, it's, there is a video on, on him doing some work in the studio. I don't know if it's from the beginning or whatever, but he does talk a little bit about how he does things. So, yeah. But I'm, I'm certainly going to go for drawing it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you all. Right, okay, so here we are then. We're going to be um, just 
first of all, obviously you can see I've already started drawing this out. Um, so the interesting thing about the uh, face was the uh, angle that the head is tilted at. Um, I also found it interesting the little highlights um, around his eye as well where he's um, been crying and things. Um, but at this stage what I started to do is I just looking at the angles of the eyes, the positioning of the nose and um, the size and shape of the lips. And you'll see me adjusting uh, things quite a bit as I go through the process of drawing um, this out. The other thing to do as well is looking for uh, planes or of uh, angles of shapes on the uh, face itself too. So the interesting thing about drawing freehand is that as you go, you're actually learning more about the portrait as you um, draw it out. Uh, whereas if we're tracing it, we are literally skipping over all of that um, information. So in a sense, you know, it's good to do um, some tracing sometimes because it gets you to where you want to be uh, really quickly. But on the other hand, you learn and you observe a lot more by sitting down and drawing and adjusting things. So you saw just there how I completely removed the eye and then redrew it in a slightly different position. And you will see me adjust it again afterwards. Um, the eye is in the wrong position again. Um, I think just there, not sure. Um, we'll have a look in a few minutes and then I'll make adjustments and finer adjustments. So they start off really with the larger shapes to begin with. Um, when I'm drawing out a portrait like this, I look at the angle of the shape of the face and then I compare distances um, between each other using my pencil. And you can see me doing that just there. Look, I put the angle of the eye um, on horizontally using a pencil so I can see how much higher or lower the eyes are compared to each other. So here I'm just refining and adding uh, obviously a little bit of detail so once you've got the main larger shapes of um, features on the face then you can start adding some of the details. You may find that as you're drawing that uh, some things need to be changed a little bit again. Here you can see um, that I've realized that my ear was a little bit too high up. So I've moved it down a little bit further. Um, on reflection, it might even have been uh, good to go a little bit lower than that, but um, I think it looked pretty good, pretty accurate anyway. So these are all the colors I've used. I'm using, um, I found that Venetian red uh, was a really good colour to start off with a, skin, a general sort of skin tone for somebody like this. Um, but I use um, Burnt Umber and uh, Ultramarine to get a really nice dark shadowy colour, um, which is um, where I start on this. You'll notice as well that I'm working generally over the whole of the portrait um, to start with. So it's nice just to put in some of the clearer, uh, more obvious shadows that you can see on this picture. I chose this photograph because it, it has the shadows on the left hand side there and some good contrasting areas to focus on when making the drawing, uh, which makes you know a real difference to um, creating that three dimensional effect that we're looking for in a picture. So I start just to map out some of the shadows here uh, and that automatically starts to tell me if I've got things right um, because it kind of brings it to life a little bit and shows me a bit of the accuracy in the shadows and things. So now um, I was talking earlier about finding a mid sort of skin tone. So this is it um, here. So I've used a uh, Venetian red uh, and a little bit of white to create that. Um, you can see I'm already starting to add some more vivid um, colours onto the left hand side of the face. Um, during that, um, that picture at the top there you can see by Paul Wright, um, the artist that we've watched a video on recently, uh, you can see that I'm using um, his colours in his portrait to help me to map out 
and to understand how he works as far as marks and sweeping gestures go and um, how he has used colours as well. Now the trick here I think sometimes is to allow yourself a little bit of freedom and say yeah okay so the artist didn't like this I'm gonna just accept that my way of working might be just a little bit different. I do manage to create quite a nice little portrait um, at the end in a very similar style to um, to Paul Wright but um, just giving yourself a little bit of freedom there in your mind it really helps. So uh, you can see that I've um, I know I, I said earlier this guy is actually crying in this photograph so um, what I've done is I've tried to emphasize um, you know the rawness perhaps of his eyes and I've used uh, kind of a, a little bit more of a a pinky crimsony sort of um, colour around his eyes to emphasise the fact that um, perhaps his eyes are a little bit raw from uh, crying and so forth. So I'm just darkening down some of the shadows there on the left hand side using the burnt umber and ultramarine and perhaps like dipping into a few other colours as I go as well. Now at this stage where we've got quite a few um, different colours in it already. You can see that I've got this um, yellow colour which is um, I think it was a Naples yellow with a bit of white in there. Once you start getting quite a few colours on your palette what you'll find is that you notice there's new colours coming up that perhaps you hadn't planned to work with and it's worth just um, being free uh, free enough just to say I wonder where this colour might uh, work well. Um, sometimes it might not work of course but the nice thing about acrylics is it dries really quickly and um, you can paint back over it and sometimes you can do a thin watered down glaze of colour over the top of um, another colour um, perhaps one that didn't work or one that does work but needs toning down a little bit or softening then you can do a glaze over that colour anyway. So if you when you get this lovely palette and you've got all these different colours appearing you can start then to play around with um, with the colours a little bit more and look at the unity of the whole picture too. So here I think it was, uh, I, you just saw me enlarge the um, palette there that I've got up on the side. I used a crimson, a Venetian red and white to get uh, a little bit of a different colour, but one that doesn't like stick out in, in your face sort of thing. Um, so I've used that to put a general uh, tone for the lips or colour for the lips or hue if you want to call it that. Uh, so there you can see a little bit of a difference with the lips and I've carried on layering little bits of colour over the top. I'm always looking at both the photograph and the Paul Wright picture to help me to um, gauge what I'm going to do next. But one thing I did really enjoy doing this was the fact that you could put down just like a single colour onto the picture and let it kind of um, sit on top of the others without feeling like you needed to blend. Gosh, I'm talking very quickly there. I think that was the end of the Monday night session. Okay, so we are now on the Tuesday. And you can see me here getting the paints out that I want to use. Um, also, you can just about see me putting down all the colours that I think I'm going to use during uh, this stage or painting this picture. Um, so that allows me quick access. Um, it's, it's sometimes it is quite good to put out colours that you're going to use because um, if you're thinking, oh, what colour? Where do I get this colour from? Then it kind of pause makes you pause a little bit for a minute. So being um, prepared and having all of the materials on the palette or on the plate in this case in front of you 
just helps to keep the flow helps you to keep the flow of the way that you're working so you've got the colors there all the time the other thing that i found useful and i mentioned in the video was that i used some of the uh, retarder fluid which is um, fluid that you can add to your um, paint or acrylic which means that the paint will stay a wetter or usable for a bit longer and I found that's, that really does work because in my studio where it's nice and warm it does kind of tend to dry up very quickly and then it's not really usable anymore a lot of the time. So um, just down near the ear you saw me do, uh, you might have just seen that I did a really long brush stroke coming off the ear. One of the nice things about Paul Wright's work is that He's not afraid to let some of those brush strokes uh, overlap into the background and some of the background brush strokes to overlap into the um, portrait itself, uh, which I thought was a really nice and interesting way to work. It creates a sense of uh, movement and energy, which is what I mentioned earlier. There you can see me just going out of the side of the picture. It kind of brings the background and foreground together, but also those marks, those lines, um, like with the blues and things overlapping onto the photo, um, can allow you to actually um, emphasize some of the features on the face. So like the eyebrows, for example, a bit later on, I add um, some of the skin tone back over the eyebrows and that gives the sense of the hairs within the picture as well on the, um, eyebrows. So here I'm just darkening down the hair because I was quite keen for it to be balanced as far as the picture goes, um, you know, with the dark and the lighter areas of the picture and it kind of brings and unites the whole of the head together a little bit more. It's coming along quite nicely. Um, even though I I kind of came to the end of this one um, today on Tuesday. Um, I, I, you know, afterwards you put all the stuff away, you still spot little things that you could go back and improve on. So, you know, even when you say you finished, you could always spot little things that you can come back to. So when I watched the video of Paul Wright, I think it might have been a different artist actually, but I did see an artist doing some very, very controlled splatters on the surface of the picture, which is what I just did with this one. And I think it just, I don't know what it is, but it just adds a little something to the paintwork itself, um, as long as they don't dominate or fall in the wrong place, which is why I call it a controlled splatter. Um, it can be, it can add another layer of texture and excitement into the picture. So with the hair what I did is I added a few other colours onto that hair and I brought later on I bring some of those greens from the background over the hair as well. Um, so I used some like more more of the burnt umber on its own and some yellow ochre and some white highlights back over the top of the hair uh, and you'll see me doing that in a little bit. Now, one thing I liked about the Paul Wright is that you've got these accents of, um, of really strong, bold reds and brighter colours as well. So this is me helping out one of you. There we go. Now, um, this is quite a nice uh, part of the picture. Painting the picture is, I thought, right, now let's get some really strong highlights in. So you can see I've done one on the nose, one on the cheekbone on the uh, right side and some on the uh, forehead. And then I go back in and darken down. So uh, oh, I'm adding some accents of red or like a reddish sort of colour. And 
can soften down that little bit of red on the cheek. It looks like red on here, but actually it's, it is more of a pink, softer pink. So I'm just darkening down some of the, I darken down some of the shadowy areas. But there's a lot of layering of color. And once those layers start to appear, it's a good idea, everyone, to stand back from what you've been doing and have a look at it more from a distance. Um, because you can then spot things that maybe you need just adding in. And in the videos that um, we played, you can see the artist really contemplating every brush stroke and where things might go. But you get this gr wonderful sense of having plenty of time to do it as well. So the artist is standing back, looking at the artwork, adding a brush stroke here, maybe um, a dot or, or a splatter in there. And um, you really get this sense, you know, that this person is really into it, really enjoying it, but also is taking the time. And the fact that the artists work in silence as well is really interesting too, because it just gives you this sense of um, space. And there goes the little teardrops coming out of his eye. Um, and I added a few um, extra sort of accents uh, and lines coming off the hair, as you can see in some of Paul Wright's work too. So in pretty close to the end, just now. And still adding little touches of detail. And one thing you should I should mention as well, is, we talked about this a little bit in the class, is making the whites of the eyes a little bit dark as well. They're often not white at all. They're more of a, often kind of this dull sort of gray color. But against everything else, it stands out quite well. Okay. There we are, just working into the backgrounding, a bit more splattering in places. I actually um, really enjoyed doing a copy of Paul Wright's work. Well, it's not a copy, is it? It's an original piece, but uh, in the style of. Brilliant way to learn how to make painting. Right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, we'll be back next week to do a little bit more. Cheerio!